Hi, I'm Janie Cohen and I'm in my studio in Burlington, Vermont. I am happy to welcome you to the Ava Studio Tour. And I want to begin by talking a bit about um, the material that I work with, which is literally material. I've been collecting cloth for decades and I've been stitching cloth by hand for almost as long. Um, this is actually my earliest piece, which my parents sent me several years ago that I did for Valentine's Day when I was nine. Um, and I completely forgot about it. But the, the love of cloth and of stitching stayed with me. Um, so I collect cloth from all over the world and my feeling is the older, the better, and the more worn and um, how it shows its usage, the more interesting it is to me. At the same time, as an artist, it's a challenge to work with, with a material that comes into my studio with its own histories. So this is one of three large new pieces in the exhibition that all began as color studies. So they began with a, a formalist interest. Um, but each of them went in a very different direction once I started selecting the pieces of cloth. So you can see um, it's a number of earth tone pieces of cloth against a, a blue. Um, what it evolved into was um, handiwork by women from the 1800s to 2022 about. Um, so it's a, it, this is a piece that, that is a good example of, a, of kind of the interweaving of my interest in the cloth itself and the history of the cloth and combining these things from different parts of the world to um, put that interwoven with compositional elements, color, etc. So um, for example, this is a sampler stitched by a 10-year-old girl in Massachusetts in 1809. It's a really beautiful example of American samplers. And this and this are both pieces of, of gorgeous dyed wool um, made by a friend, Elizabeth Bunsen, who's a, a Vermont artist. This is a piece of a sakabakuro, which is a Japanese um, bag a canvas that is used in making sake. There's a lot of, of, of work done with these and they frequently develop holes and are mended um, over the years. And these were used in 19th century, early up to the early 20th century. But this is a beautiful example of the stitching. This is a, um, an obasan woven, a, a piece of an obasan weaving probably from the early 1800s in France. Um, and the colors are likely faded, but you get a sense of just the beautiful um, design and, and the colors of it. These are um, examples of handmade felt um, that I purchased in at a, a fair in New Hampshire a number of years ago. And you can just see, again, the, the subtle dyeing in them is beautiful. Um, this is uh, from, a painter's, um, from a painter's apron. And I have in, in my collection of cloth a lot of examples of splattered aprons and um, drop cloths and things like that that I really like to include, not just for the visual impact, but also for a kind of a, a, a reference to the act of painting and the act of making and the act of um, mark making. And then the, I also want to add that there's some very mundane fabrics in this and I collect a lot of, um, of old faded things that I, I often use as background. Um, this was an old cotton canvas shower curtain that was in my life for many years. Um, this was a, this is a linen um, placemat. And then there are also some contemporary silk pieces that I, um, that I added to it as well. This one, like the last, um, was part of this series of large color studies. And I, I realized I had so much in my collection that was pink and green, or as I was calling it, um, salmon and celadon. 
But this one, as you can see, took a turn towards the personal pretty early on. Um, and that's how a lot of my work evolves, um, is intuitively and formally. Um, and then I usually spend a while figuring out why it went where it went. So um, this one is called Desiderium, and it's really about memory and desire and um, childhood. Um, and includes everything from um, paint from a um, painted drop cloth here, which just reminded me of kind of uh, the freedom of, of childhood artwork. Um, this is another Japanese piece, which is just the softest blanket-like thing you can imagine, um, which is a um, zokin, also uh, hand-sewn by women in Japan from old cloth, as to use as a dust cloth, believe it or not. And then they've got this child's dress. Um, this and this hark back to my own personal history. I had a blanket when I was young, which may have something to do with my artwork. Um, but then this little guy um, was under a car in Bushwick, and I saw it and took a dive for it. But sometimes I find cloth that um, begs to have a focus on the back side of it, and there's a number of pieces in the show where that's the case. Um, this one is this gorgeous chaos of color. It's the back of a very old faded um, needlepoint upholstery that was the upholstery of an entire couch that a friend of mine gave me. I hope this glimpse into the way I work and to the kinds of cloth that I use in my work will enhance your viewing of the show, and I really hope you enjoy it. Hi. My name's Cameron Davis, or Cammie, and this is my studio in Charlotte, Vermont. Welcome to my Ava Artist Studio Tour. So my paintings have been exploring my evolving understanding of what is nature for 40 plus years. I'm interested in frameworks conceptually and through the painting practice that locate we humans within the web of life, and all of this taking place within the wider arc of an evolving cosmos. Currently, I'm using plant patterns, and they serve as a reference to nature as a subject, but I also see them as the basis of improvisation, and that improvisation itself reveals how life works. So in a painting, you can be understood as an ecosystem of conceptual prompts, associations, along with surfaces, marks, color, shapes, and all of these together generate felt structures with emergent, hopefully fresh outcomes that unfold, as eco-philosopher Andreas Weber says, through mutual influences and transformations. The paintings in the Ava exhibition titled Magnolia's Desire span a decade of considering a star magnolia memorial tree in my garden. I planted the tree for my mother because I noticed a neighbor's in full bloom when she passed in late April. At the same time, my colleagues gifted me with a lilac memorial tree, not knowing that it blooms a month later, which is her birthday at the end of May. So I love this month of heightened remembering, of noticing budding and blooming times. And I find that it has both this personal story for me and has now become this wider marker of noticing climate change as these bloom times have shifted. I recently returned to using magnolia flowers and, and their patterns, leaf patterns, because I became fascinated when I read that magnolias have been on this earth more than 95 million years. And that's why they earned the symbolism of an enduring love, which seemed entirely apt. Major works for me take anywhere from three months to three years. I've even gone back into paintings uh, a decade later if something seemed off to um, go back in and manipulate something a little bit more. 
My work has also been influenced by a decade-plus collaboration with composer Sam Granacha and his creative partner and wife, Paula Granacha. Twelve paintings were the stage set for Sam's Emergent Universe Oratorio, and that was performed in Shelburne, Vermont, Philadelphia, and Cleveland. Currently, details from these paintings and more are being used for the creation of a video animation, animated set, and I'm working with animator William Tipper for a forthcoming performance by Albany Pro Musica, and this was funded in part by the Vermont Arts Council. During the pandemic, the Granachas and um, Creative Leap founder uh, John Cimino and I returned to the libretto of the oratorio to update the science and to reflect this, these times. I bring this up because I've noticed that being immersed daily in the, the movement of the animation and also in the words kind of working on me while I'm in the studio, that that's influenced the paintings, these current paintings here at the Ava. Um, titles refer to the oratorio. Magnolia's Desire refers to a quote that we use by Andreas Weber, or the notion of desire. Um, Gravity's Law is the name of one of the musical movements, uh, music to the work of uh, poetry of Rilke. And a communion of subjects um, referring to Thomas Berry, uh, whose work in directly informs the oratorio's themes. You can see more of my work on my website. It's CameronDavisStudio.com. Or you can contact me directly at cdavis at uvm.edu for more recent work that hasn't made it up to the website yet. Thank you.